Hello students, let's discuss about Kalman syndrome. Kalman syndrome is an example of hypogonadotropic hypogonadism. Okay, in Kalman syndrome, there is hypogonadotropic hypogonadism. So, what exactly? I mean by hypogonadotropic hypogonadism. Hypogonadotropic means there is a decrease production of gonadotropic hormones. So, what are the gonadotropic hormones? The gonadotropic hormones are FSH and LH. These are the gonadotropic hormones. So, in a female who is having Kalman syndrome, there is a decrease production of this gonadotropin hormones. As there is a decreased production of gonadotropin hormones, what happens? Usually these gonadotropin hormones will act on gonads so that in the gonads, you know, uh, for example in the ovaries, the follicles are getting stimulated, they are getting developed so that ovulation happens and normal menstrual cycle happens. So follicle stimulating hormone usually stimulate the gonads. So, whenever there is a decreased production of follicle stimulating hormone, the ovaries are not being stimulated. So, the follicles they are not going to develop, they are not going to mature, they are not going to ovulate. So, what happens? The gonads are not doing their function. So, there is hypofunctioning of the gonads. So, we will say that hypogonadism. No gonadotropic hormones, no stimulation no functioning of the gonads. So, hypogonadotropic hypogonadism means because of no presence of gonadotropic hormones, the gonads are not functioning. Okay, this is the basics. Now, let's see in a female what actually happens. This is what usually happens. Normally, physiologically, this is what happens. Let's see. This is the hypothalamus. Right now, I am discussing about the Hypothalamo pituitary ovarian axis. In hypothalamo pituitary ovarian axis, this thing, this box which I am representing, I am representing it as hypothalamus. Hypothalamus. So, in the hypothalamus, there are a group of neurons. Okay, the group of neurons which are producing GnRH. Okay, gonadotropin releasing hormone. Gonadotropin releasing hormone is produced by a group of neurons in the hypothalamus. Now, this gonadotropin releasing hormone, it is going to reach the anterior pituitary. Now, in the anterior pituitary, these gonadotropin releasing hormones, they will act on gonadotropes. Okay, these are the gonadotropes. Whenever these gonadotropes they are acted upon by gonadotropin releasing hormone, what they will do? They will produce the gonadotropic hormones. What is the important gonadotropic hormone? Follicle stimulating hormone. This follicle stimulating hormone, it will act on the gonads which are in this case ovaries. Okay. So, the ovaries, in the ovaries, the follicles, they are going to be mature, develop and they will be ovulated. Now, Guys, please remember, for the production of GnRH, please concentrate in this area. For the production of GnRH in the hypothalamus, a female need to have a group of neurons which are producing this GnRH. Okay? So, these, if there is GnRH producing neurons in the hypothalamus, then GnRH production will be normal. What is the important concept here you have to keep in mind is these GnRH producing neurons, they are not originated in the hypothalamus itself. They have originated outside the brain in the olfactory placard. Okay. Okay. Now, these GnRH producing neurons, they have originated in a region known as olfactory placard. From the olfactory placard, these GnRH producing neurons, they will migrate into the hypothalamus and they will produce the GnRH, okay, by the time of puberty. Now, 
in Kalman syndrome, what actually happened? Okay. See, before discussing that, let me tell you one more important concept. See, for the migration of for the migration of this GnRH producing neurons, see this is the GnRH producing neuron which have originated in the olfactory background and this is going to migrate into the hypothalamus. We have discussed about it. For the migration of this GnRH producing neuron from the olfactory blackout to the hypothalamus, you need to have a protein. Protein is necessary for this migration. That protein is known as Anosmin, okay, anosmin 1, okay, anosmin 1 is an important protein which helps in this migration. So, what is the gene responsible for this protein? The gene responsible for this production of anosmin is Cal1 gene, okay. This Cal1 is also known as anos one gene. So, this NOS1 gene or previously known as Cal1 gene, this gene is going to produce a protein known as anosmin and this anosmin will be necessary for the migration of GnRH producing neurons from the olfactory placo to the hypothalamus. So, in Kalman syndrome, what actually happens? In Kalman syndrome, there is a mutation of this gene, Cal1 gene or NOS1 gene is mutated so that this protein is not going to be expressed. Anosmin 1 protein, it is no longer going to be expressed. If there is no expression of this Anosmin 1 protein, what happens? There is a no migration of GnRH producing neuron to hypothalamus. So, in this female, there is no GnRH production or very less amount of GnRH production. So, whenever there is no GnRH, no FSH, no FSH, ovaries are not getting stimulated. If ovaries are not getting stimulated, the follicles are not growing. If the follicles are not growing, there is no ovulation. Anovulation is seen. Can such female is going to have her normal menstrual cycles? No. So, clinical features. What are the clinical features? You will see in a female who is having Kalman syndrome. First clinical feature is an ovulation. An ovulation. Why? Because there is no gonadotropic hormones, no FSH, no stimulation, no ovulation. As she is not having ovulation, will she have her normal periods? No. Why? Because no gonadotropin hormones. If there are no gonadotropin hormones, you know. Uh, the stimulation by the ovaries are not going to be stimulated. If the ovaries are not going to be stimulated, there is no release of estrogens. If there is no estrogens, what happens? The uterine endometrium is not going to proliferate. If it is not getting proliferated, so how can the menses happen? No. So, even this female will have amenorrhea. Okay, amenorrhea. What kind of amenorrhea? A primary amenorrhea. So, a female who is having Kalman syndrome is going to present to the clinic with a chief complaint of amenorrhea. Now, even these females can also be having a problem with fertility. Why? Because there is no ovulation. So, how can she become the pregnant? So, infertility. Infertility can also be seen. Now, guys, remember usually a female is going to have her normal menstrual cycles by the age of you know 12 13 years she is going to ha normally have her menstrual cycles but this females as she is having low amount of gonadotropic hormones her normal menstrual cycles are not going to be started so she is going to have a delayed puberty okay delayed puberty so Kalman's patient will suffer with delayed puberty. Now, most important MCQ, okay, what is that? What is the most common cause of delayed puberty? The most common cause of delayed puberty is not the Kalman syndrome. The most common cause of delayed puberty is constitutional, okay, constitutional 
okay delay constitutional delay is the most common cause of delayed puberty what does it mean by constitutional delay it's not only the reproductive functions okay the entire height weight everything okay it's a constitutional general delay okay so this constitutional delay is the most common cause of delayed puberty in constitutional delay please remember if a female is having delayed puberty because of constitutional reasons her height will also be less okay she is going to be short statured okay less height but if she is having kalman syndrome then definitely will be having delayed puberty but in kalman syndrome the height of this female okay the height of this female is normal so this is the way how you can differentiate the delayed puberty because of kalman syndrome with the constitutional delay in constitutional delay she will be having the features of delayed puberty with short stature or less height when compared to her normal age in kalman syndrome she is going to have the features of a delayed puberty but the height of this female is normal okay now what else we have to keep in mind see why exactly is this kalman syndrome kalman syndrome we know it is because of the mutation of a kalman gene or anas1 gene so that the protein okay is not going to be expressed properly okay it is the anas1 protein it is not going to be uh, you know uh, expressed properly so that there is no migration of the gnrh producing neurons from the olfactory plaque to the hypothalamus now the same anas1 gene guys this is a very very important mcq the same anas1 gene is also important for the olfactory functions okay the smell sensation so if there is mutation of this anosmin 1 gene so sorry anosmin 1 protein even these females can have problem with her sense of smelling now i am writing here the other clinical features include anosmia or hypoosmia okay anosmia hypoosmia can be seen in these females now what else what else we have to keep in mind regarding this kalman syndrome some females who is having this kalman syndrome can be associated with other abnormalities like renal agenesis please keep in mind these are the other associations okay renal agenesis cleft palate and color blindness okay guys please don't forget these points so a female with kalman syndrome she is going to present to the clinic with the chief complaint of primary amenorrhea okay now there are many diseases where a female can present with the complaint of primary amenorrhea what are the other diseases okay the differential so what i want to put into your mind is the differential diagnosis so the differential diagnosis of kalman syndrome should be done with mullerian a genesis okay even a patient who is having mullerian agenesis she will also be having primary amenorrhea now transverse vaginal septum okay even if a family if a female who is having transverse vaginal septum due to the vertical fusion defects of vagina she will also present with the main complaint of primary amenorrhea are imperforated hymen okay this hymen which is not having any perforations okay even a female who is having a constitutional delay you have to 
differentially diagnose okay so some important differential diagnosis you have to keep in mind later you know even if, you, if a, a person is having androgen insensitivity syndrome a person with androgen insensitivity syndrome will also present with the chief complaint of primary amenorrhea okay so these are some important points for the differential diagnosis okay so important conditions for differential diagnosis okay well and good now how to treat these patients so the treatment now when it's come to the treatment part a female with kalman syndrome she is not going to have secondary sexual characters why why because she is not having estrogen and androgens why because there are no gonadotropic hormones fsh helps in the formation of estrogen lh helps in the formation of androgens in a female as there is no gonadotropins no estrogen no androgens so the secondary sexual characters like breast development axillary hair development and pubic hair development is not going to be proper in this female so what we have to do how we can treat this condition okay please keep in mind the secondary sexual characters are absent or less now how we can treat this condition give estrogens to this um, patient okay give estrogens why this estrogens will cause the breast development secondary sexual characters okay now please never forget in a female with intact uterus you should never ever give only estrogens alone why because it will cause endometrial hyperplasia and endometrial cancer okay because only estrogens we are giving only estrogens that is going to stimulate the uterine endometrium it causes the hyperplastic changes that can any time lead to endometrial cancer so you should give estrogens and progesterone okay cyclical cyclical estrogens and progesterone should be given in a patient with kalman's syndrome okay guys the topic is completed